I've been getting so many requests for this sandwich right here, probably from all you Nordic subscribers out there, but for a while I just didn't feel like doing an entire sandwich series episode on it because when it comes to YouTube, people like clicking on the over the top stuff, you know, the food porn with the, the cheese dripping out and you know, things stacked super high. And this sandwich is not really that to be honest, but it got to a point where I just couldn't deny the request. So I'm jumping in full speed. It's time to break down this sandwich, but first I got to try it cause I've never sampled it before. I know nothing about it. So let's head out and do a little research. Just left the studio, I'm heading over to S'more now to sample a sandwich that I can't even pronounce. So I'll just wait to talk to them to get the actual pronunciation. And it's always exciting when I don't know much about the sandwich. And in this case, I've never tried it. So hopefully today I get a pretty good idea of what the sandwich is all about. I'm gonna take the subway from Gowanus all the way over to 12th Street in Manhattan. watched the last episode of the sandwich series on the Vada Pal, you might be asking yourself why I use the same animation. And that's because we are back in Tompkins Square Park right next to Desi Gali. So S'more is on Avenue A on 12th Street, not Avenue B where Desi Gali was. So we're back in the East Village again. But today it happens to be 65 degrees in the middle of March and not freezing temperatures like last time, just a few weeks ago. So everyone is happy in New York. So this is Sebastian. Are you Sebastian one or Sebastian two? I don't know. He's definitely not one. Okay. Se one. Seb <laughs> we'll just go by that. Sebastian one, Sebastian two, but you're the cook. Yeah. More business. Business, kind of, whatever. 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 And this is fresh bread you're bringing in? Fresh bread from She Wolf Bakery at the Farmer's Market. Oh, I love She Wolf. So this is rye? Yeah, it's rye and sour. Oh, amazing. Can't wait to see that. Cool. Great. Let's get in the kitchen. And you're both from where? You... I live in Switzerland, Australia. I came here 12 years ago. And then what about you? I came from Denmark five years ago. And how did you guys meet up? We met at a Danish restaurant in Tribeca. Tribeca. Called the Copenhagen. Called the Copenhagen. Makes very, sense. Uh, very original <laughs> name. <laughs> Initially, this concept was catering. You opened this a year ago, you said? We opened this a year ago, literally almost to this day. <laughs> we are known, I guess, for our open face sandwiches which we call Smavel. What was that? <laughs> Smavel. Okay, let's break this down. So, how would you break that word down? Uh, it's like Sma, should I say that? Sma. Boil. Bo bro. Boil. Bro okay, so how about this? What's the New York version of that? S'more broad. S'more broad. Easier. So what's s'more, is that? S'more means butter in Danish. Butter. And, and then bread. Means bread. So, so it's like buttered bread. In Denmark, we're not shy to butter. The other Sebastian so, don't really care for butter. You hate butter? I hate butter. <laughs> okay, so the original thing is just butter, like rye bread with butter, right? Yeah, way back it was literally like rye bread with lard. Over um, in Scandinavia, you get just a ton of different varieties. You have a ton. You get smoked salmon, an assortment of different herrings. Basically, like you say, it's always an open face, like it's an open canvas. It's yeah, it's like you, you can literally do like anything on them. It's whatever you want to make. Yeah, yeah we're kind of like, having our own take on the traditionals. So we got our smoked salmon, we got the pickled herring, my favorite, the curry herring. We have our rendition of a potato smuggle. Okay. We do a chicken salad, um, and then we run specials every week. So you said the overall cuisine is, is heavy, but fresh. It's always fresh no matter what it is, but it's just, there's always some type of sauce. In a classic kitchen, always like mayonnaise or like cream-based sauces. Yeah. And stuff like that. For my personal, perspective i think nowadays you have a complete sort of like turnaround of that on danish cuisine on Dan like you might utilize similar techniques but it's a lot more fresh and vibrant um a lot more emphasis on like organic locally grown ingredients yeah the actual ingredients themselves as opposed to the sauce you pour over or yeah you know we want to bring nordic 
culture, food, cuisine, whatever you want to call it, to kind of like, you know, the foray a little bit more. And I think Nordic food is not necessarily as much about the dishes as it is in Italian culture. It's more yeah. about like this general idea of like, how are you getting your food? It's what a philosophy are you using? It's over a, philosophy. a recipe. Exactly. Okay, and what's the, the philosophy is local It's like and local, fresh. you know, fresh ingredients, like seasonal ingredients, and really just like utilizing what you can. Try to be sustainable. Um, when we get to this last yeah. quarter of an inch, either like chop it up or slice it really thin on a machine and get these like really thin slices out, salt, pepper, oil, and we just roast them in the oven. Mm. It comes out like a chip that we use for catering or... Love it. In this case, we use it as like some type of crunchy element, like a garnish. Definitely stealing that idea. How the hell do you eat this thing? There's no correct way. <laughs> knife and fork. Okay. Yeah, that one I would definitely recommend a knife and fork. All right, two down. So we're going for the smoked salmon. Going for it. So the smoked salmon, would you say most popular Hands sandwich? down. Hands down the most popular one. Okay. Is this recipe traditional? In Denmark, the most traditional one is Grablox. Greeny mustard, honey, Dijon. Okay. Our shoes we mixed around and it's like really overloaded with it. So mustard and salmon. You eat a lot of lemon with salmon, I feel like. Yeah. Um, especially also in Denmark. And we kind of wanted to substitute the mustardy part for like a sweet element. So standard so we, would be mustard yeah, in like Denmark. Yeah, like a mustardy sauce. Okay, and you're replacing it with a lemon curd. Yeah, yeah it gives like this like sing of like freshness yeah. and, like, with the seafood. I like that. Hopefully one day we'll be able to like really go in depth in making our own products and yeah. smoking our own things and baking our own things like he mentioned earlier. So. All in-house. Yeah. I love that goal. So that was epic and super delicious. You can tell they come from that chef background because all the flavors were just well curated and really balanced. So I'm definitely inspired to try out my own combination. I'm definitely doing a smoked salmon, but I tried out uh, a lot of Nordic sauces and different flavor combinations. So the question is, what combination will I use with the salmon, with the rye bread? So we're headed off to the studio and it's time to dig in. Like all sandwiches, the most important element is getting the bread right. Without good bread, you're not gonna have a good sandwich. So going to S'more yesterday, it's clear that your rye bread doesn't need to be 100% rye. They use a rye with a mix of wheat flour, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a blend of some whole wheat, and we're also going to use rye flour, and then we're gonna add in a bunch of nuts and seeds and grains, which is very traditional for Danish rye bread. And remember, this says sourdough rye bread, so to get this bread to rise, we're using a sourdough starter. So when I got in this morning, I fed my starter with equal parts whole wheat flour and water to get that activating. And if you don't have a sourdough starter, no problem. You can use regular instant yeast. Just replace what I'm doing in this recipe with about two to three teaspoons of instant yeast. So I have my 50-50 blend of whole wheat and rye. What I did yesterday was I soaked these seeds right here. Check that out. I put in a quarter cup of wheat berries, two tablespoons of sunflower seeds, two tablespoons of pumpkin seeds, two tablespoons of flax seeds, and I let those sit for 24 hours and they're gonna get incorporated into the dough. But it's always tricky to add ingredients because they're going to affect the hydration level and the texture of your dough. And in this case, if you added the ingredients beforehand, they would soak up water. But since they've already soaked up the water in here, we just have to account that there's gonna be more moisture in our dough. So rather than adding the water at 75% hydration, I'm gonna go down to about 70% to account for a little more moisture coming in once the seeds go in. So dough is mixed. I'm just gonna let this sit in auto lease until the starter is ready to go. Then I'll add the starter, the salt, and the seeds. Looking good. See all those bubbles? Definitely at least doubled in size. So this is ready for the bread. So this is 
looking pretty good right here. Obviously just added the starter, so we're just beginning the fermentation process. So I'm just gonna let this sit for about an hour and then start you know, doing some really gentle stretch and folds. And remember, this doesn't have much gluten at all. So it's not gonna be your normal sourdough where you're doing all these big stretch and folds. It's gonna be a different process and this is new for me. So I'm just kind of feeling it out. And when it comes to making bread, that's all you can do. You gotta, you gotta use your feel, your intuition. So I probably will do a little bit of stretch and folding, but I gotta see how this, this dough reacts as it ferments. So I've stretched and folded once, and you can see like the dough is super sticky. It's dense. Ooh. So I'm just doing my best to stretch it out a little bit, and I'll just keep kind of folding it over and doing my best for the next hour and a half while this thing starts to activate and rise. All right, so perform my last stretch and fold. Got a little bit of volume, but again, not much gluten here. It's a little smoother, but it's still super sticky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm going to pop that in the fridge overnight to bulk ferment. And then I'll form the loaf tomorrow, put it in the pan and we'll bake it off. So this has been sitting in the fridge overnight. I can't wait for this bread. Look at those seeds. So I'm gonna roll this out, um, do my best to roll it out, and I'm gonna get it in a Pullman loaf pan to proof a little bit before it goes in the oven. that roll out much better than when I recipe tested. I guess that's why you recipe test. I'm gonna cover that and let it proof for about an hour or two until I see some cracks in the top and then I'll bake it off. So check this out. We actually got some pretty good rise there. You know what, I'm actually gonna give it a few slices. The bread they used at S'more had a few slices, so why not? All right, so I'm gonna put this lid back on. And then we're gonna throw it in the oven. It's at 450. I'll bake it for about 20 minutes with the lid on and then take the lid off. All right, it's been 20 minutes. Let's see what's going on. Oh, whoa. I don't even think I gave it enough room to rise, but that looks good. Um, there's a little bit of a crust already, but when the lid's off, that crust will really develop. I'll keep it at 450 for another 20 minutes. All right, this beast is done. Look at that. Beauty. Looks like it released a little from the sides too. This bread looks fantastic. My first rye was not nearly as good as this. Second attempt looks great and it's, it's pretty dense. This thing is like a brick. That's how rye should be. So I wanna take a second to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which came at the perfect time. I just received a package from Moe, and look at this, beautiful salmon. I got about five pieces of the Saku portion pack. These portion sizes are great for just a quick dinner. For me, when I'm preparing salmon, usually I just salt it a few hours before just to get a nice crust on it, then throw it in a pan for about two minutes aside, and you have a nice piece of salmon you can throw on a salad or just throw it over some rice, whatever you want. And this Moe salmon couldn't be more perfect for the Smobrod sandwich because it's coming right from Norway, right in Scandinavia where this sandwich comes from. And Moe salmon really is goodness. It's packed with protein. It's got a ton of omega-3 and you can see it just has an incredible marbling and an incredible look. And the best part is you can now order this salmon goodness on Amazon Fresh and have it at your house in no time.
time for a quick dinner. But for me, I'm doing something a little differently for this sandwich. You saw that s'more, they use the cure salmon. That's one of the most popular s'more broad sandwiches. And of course, since it's the sandwich series, we're making everything from scratch. So I'm not only gonna cure this salmon, but I'm going to smoke this salmon as well. Hold on, check this out. Da, da, da. I've got this smoker pan right here that we're gonna be trying out for the first time, doing a little experiment. So after we cure the salmon, we're gonna get a nice texture on it, then we'll throw it in the smoker for that extra layer of flavor. You know it's good salmon when you can get your nose right up to that and it has no smell at all. That's a really good sign and very important for this recipe because we are curing this right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a mixture of salt and sugar in equal parts. And you can put these in plastic wrap if you want. I actually don't have plastic wrap. I'm just gonna put them into a Tupperware and then sprinkle that coating all over and let them sit. For bigger pieces, you wanna go at least 24 hours. For these, they're probably good after, well, we'll see. I'm gonna just check them every few hours and see how long they'll need. All right, so these have been curing all day, about five or six hours. The texture has completely changed. You can see, look at that, a ton of moisture has pulled out of the salmon. Since they're such small pieces, I'm gonna pull them and then we'll smoke them tomorrow morning. But I will keep I'll keep one going overnight just as an experiment to see what happens when you go for the 24 hours. All right, the time has come to smoke this salmon. This is a first for me. I'm using this smoking pan, so I have it on this burner because I have an induction stove and this actually needs some gas to burn the chips. So we put that on. I've got it on a very low heat. I've got these maple wood chips right here. I'm using some maple and I'm just gonna sprinkle those. Yep, oh, yeah, I do not suggest using this if you don't have an intense oven hood, if you're inside. Okay, so drip tray goes in, slide this thing. So this should keep everything somewhat close. It's still gonna leak out, of course, but the hood should catch the rest of the smoke. So what I did was I took a, a drill and I just drilled a hole right there. The thermometer goes right into that spot so I can get a good gauge of what's going on inside there. Turn this off for a second. Since I cured these, you can eat that raw at this point. A lot of people just stop at the curing stage, but I wanna impart the smoky flavor, but I don't wanna cook it through. Like this isn't a high temperature smoke. So I'm just gonna monitor it, see how it goes, keep it at pretty low temperature. One other element we're gonna be adding to our sandwich is a half boiled egg or a soft boiled egg. I really liked it on their pickled herring. And I don't think it's traditional on salmon, but I just feel like I need it. I'm obsessed with half boiled eggs. So I'm just gonna dip these guys in into some boiling water and they boil at 12 minutes. So I'm gonna try one at six minutes, maybe one at seven minutes and we'll try to get the perfect soft boiled egg. You can see here, now we're smoking good. Let's turn this up. All right, so these have been in for just about 45 minutes. And from looking at these, it's very clear. I'm sure you can tell. The one that I cured overnight looks much better. These almost look like normal pieces of just salmon that are lightly smoked. This one looks cured with just a nice smoky glaze on the outside of it. So at least I have one to try to make sure that that thing is good. So I'm gonna pull these and refrigerate them to cool. Try that. Try that. Mm. That's incredible. Oh, it's like oily and more smoky than normal smoked salmon. So the taste is amazing, which is the most important thing, but it's not gonna give me thin slices. So I'm just gonna keep it chunky, kind of like the pickled herring sandwich that they did at S'more. Um, I still have to figure out how big the chunks are gonna be, but it won't be like a thin, nice shaving of salmon. 
I actually like where this is going. Just super soft, delicious pieces of salmon. Alex, what did you just say the, about the, the difference between the two? Um, the first one, which is the one that we cured overnight, has a better texture, like a, not a better texture, but more of a smoked salmon texture. And you can really taste the flavors of like the smokiness and it really penetrated through the salmon. The second one just tastes like a smoked salmon that you cooked. Yeah. yeah. They're still both delicious, yeah, both but it's delicious. just this one is softer compared to the, the full cure. This, oh my, it's incredible. In the restaurant, they were kind of doing the knife situation, which I get. The ones at least they were serving up were pretty intense. All right, so I'm gonna try to get like a bit of everything on there. Mm. I think this is hard to eat with a knife and fork. Well, I cut it, and then I eat it with my fingers. I don't think an egg is traditional, but I feel like a soft boiled egg is good on anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I was just amazing. See, I grew up eating smoked salmon on bagels like my whole life. Mm -hmm. That's just like being a Jew, that's all you do. Um, so this is kind of the gourmet version of that. I really like the salmon. I feel like it's super buttery. I really like the cream cheese. You didn't put a lot, but I feel like I can really taste it. Yeah, do you think um, it needs more? No, I feel like it's good. Okay, it's very complex. The seeds in the bread. I love the seeds. There's a lot going on. That is good. Sorry, pardon. <laughs> That's like gourmet brunch in an open face sandwich. Mm -hmm. You're kind of getting everything. I love the crouton. Yeah. I just got like a crouton, like a Stole big one. Stole that from S'more. Yeah, you need Good. it, the crunch, yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm, me too. I think I could refine it a little more. I'm gonna make another. Just like, okay. you know, they plate these things. Like at S'more, they're plating all day and I can tell they've learned so much just balancing flavors. These guys are chefs. So, you know, they're they're thinking about every single element. They're not just throwing together a sandwich. Mm -hmm. So there's a few adjustments I would make, but overall, I love that. I think it tastes it's great. Look how buttery the salmon is. Yeah. There's so much, yeah. That's a good um, lead into getting yourself some Moe salmon. Make sure you click the link below for the Amazon Fresh page. This salmon is amazing. I'm telling you, it's not easy to find a really good salmon, especially, and I feel like we put it to the test because when mm -hmm. you're curing it and you're smoking it and you're not just cooking the hell out of it, it needs to be good. Yeah. And this is amazing. Um, make sure you follow me at Life by Mike G um, for all the behind the scenes testing of the sandwich series because Alex and I, we're in the kitchen, we're doing a lot of testing, we're putting up really cool content there. Plenty of more action coming your way.